There's difficult bosses, and then there's pulling your hair out because you can't keep doing this to me, bosses. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks 10, unforgivably hard bosses in recent games. Starting off with number 10, it's Halo Infinite's Bassus. This first one's a bit of a cheat, because on normal difficulty, this guy's a bit of a cakewalk. It's only when you try and take him on in legendary difficulty does he become one of the hardest bosses in the entire game. You encounter him at the excavation site pretty early in Halo. Halo Infinite. If you're playing on Legendary, the previous bosses can be pretty annoying, but this guy's a brick wall compared to everything else that's come before him. What he actually does is pretty simple. He's got a big hammer, and if he so much as grazes Master Chief with it, you're dead. The fight starts with him right in your face, and you're stuck in a small little corridor, so for most players, what happens here is that cutscene ends, you start backing up, and you're dead. Now, you repeat that over and over again about a hundred more times, and you've experienced what it feels like to fight this guy on Legendary. The only reason he's not higher on this list is because he can be cheesed. Uh, just stun him at the start so he doesn't kill you, run back, grapple onto a ledge uh, above one of the doorways, and then he can't do anything to you. He's just dumbfounded you can sit there and unload on him. His shield is so strong you need some powerful weapons to even do any damage to him, but as long as you manage to play keep away up on this ledge, he's not that hard to deal with. Of course, for everyone out there who doesn't know this trick and fought this guy the normal way, we have got nothing for respect for you because this guy is just as unforgiving as they get. Number 9 is Orpheon from Returnal. Difficult bosses are hard enough to deal with on their own sometimes, but for some developers, just making it so you have to restart at the beginning of the boss isn't cruel enough, so they make players restart their entire run instead. Yeah, Returnal is a roguelike, and that means if you die, you go back to the start. No checkpoints, nothing. All the bosses in this game are tough too, but for my money, the final boss, Orpheon, is the toughest. And for a few reasons. First, just getting to them is a huge challenge. The final areas of the game by themselves are a big step up in difficulty compared to the first three, so it's likely when you get to the final boss area, you won't have full health. On top of that, the last boss itself is a three-phase gauntlet that's constantly spitting out confusing walls of bullets at you that are mostly easy enough to dodge, but the sheer number of projectiles coming at you at any given moment means that you're going to take a stray hit or two. Along with the light show, this thing throws in a few more mundane attacks, and for my money, those are actually the worst because of how difficult they are to see. Uh, your focus is on the bullet patterns, so when this thing swings an arm, you might as well like be looking the other way. I mean, you kind of are. It's pretty much invisible. Uh, the gimmick that it has also makes it a huge pain. Unless you got a high precision weapon like I lucked into having when I played this game, it can be incredibly tough to even hit the weak points on this thing. How it works is it's got all these glowing balls around, and when you shoot them, it reveals these little eyeball weak spots on the boss for a few seconds. Hitting those is how you do the big damage but with the wrong weapon man that is hard and it's not like this thing is trying to tickle you to death its attacks hit really hard and even with a big life bar it only takes a few hits to you're almost dead returnal is one of the longer roguelikes too even if you've unlocked every shortcut it can take an hour or more to get back to this thing and the random nature of the game means that when you get back you may actually be weaker than your previous attempt it's just an all-around brutal boss and just getting to it is difficult let alone actually killing it. And number 8 is Metroid Dread's Ravenbeak. If you thought Metroid was a kid's game just because it's published by Nintendo, think again, because Dread has some of the toughest and best bosses of the year in it. These guys do not screw around, but none of them go quite as hard as the final battle against Ravenbeak. He pulls no punches, he's fast, he's got a ton of different moves, and he's super aggressive. It's basically a Devil May Cry Virgil battle in 2D, like it's that crazy. He's got two phases, and they're both a huge pain to deal with. During the first phase, he has an un unbreakable shield, and the only way to do damage to him is to parry a few specific attacks. His close range attacks are incredibly damaging too, and the thing that makes this stage of the fight so difficult is this big energy ball he throws at you. It slowly hones in on your position and does a lot of damage if it hits you, but if you manage to shoot it enough, it'll actually give you some energy. It's really annoying to deal with though because it takes up so much space, sometimes trapping you positions where it feels like there's really nothing you can do but take damage. Combined with this anti-air attack where he generally 
generates this damaging energy field and this guy is just a straight up dick his second form in comparison is a little more straightforward he sprouts wings and starts just attacking really hard he flies around charges at you on the horizontal and vertical and he's got this annoying tracking shot but at least in this form you can freely damage him at this point it's really just a battle of attrition do more damage to him than he does to you but if you want any shot of actually winning you're gonna have to learn to avoid most of his attacks because he does not show mercy and number seven is Deltarune Chapter 2's Spam to Neo. Found in a secret room in the Queen's basement, the secret boss in Deltarune Chapter 2 isn't quite as challenging as the one from Chapter 1, but he still packs a hell of a punch. What's unique about him is his attack style. Unlike most other bosses from the series, for this guy you can actually shoot back, which actually makes things more difficult because now you can't just focus on dodging, you have to be attacking too. There's really no trick to beating this guy either, you just have to snap his wires that are holding him up and it's going to take a while, so the whole encounter is basically a test of endurance when you're trying to minimize the amount of damage while you slowly whittle away at the wires. In comparison, some of the other fights we've talked about so far, this guy isn't that difficult. He's not easy, that's for sure, and some of his attack patterns can be unforgiving, but he mostly plays fair. It's just a fun and weird boss that is hard that we felt deserved to be mentioned. Also, we have to mention there's an alternate version of this fight in the game too. If you got on the secret evil route, he replaced is the queen as the final boss and you have to fight him alone. You'd think for that reason it'd be way harder than the normal version, but with the additional abilities you get for going down this route, it's actually not that bad. Not saying it's easy, but it could be worse. Spamped in Neo is actually really fun uh, and a challenging fight with some great boss music. He's not as tough as some of the previous bosses on this list, but he'll still mess you up. And number six is Corrupt Toshi from Kenna Bridge of Spirits. For a game that looks like a beautiful, kid-friendly animated movie, the bosses in Kenna do not mess around. Some of these guys would give certain Dark Souls bosses a run for their money, and in our estimation, Corrupt Toshi, the boss before the last, is the hardest of them all. There are a few things that make this guy so darn hard. Uh, he hits like a dump truck, for one. Uh, he's got multiple combo attacks that are easy to get trapped in, and your actual windows to attack him are are fairly small. Even after you start to learn his tricks and find his weak points like certain long range attacks where you can stun him by shooting him in the face with an arrow, that still only gives you a window to do just a tiny little amount of damage to him compared to the giant chunks of health that he can take off you with every hit. Even though you get two free healing items in his arena, it barely helps because these things only manage to heal about one third of your health bar, so beating this guy is mainly just a matter of learning his attacks, knowing when to dodge and when to counter, and most important of all, not screwing up like even if you know exactly what you should be doing the margin for error is so thin that you pretty much have to be doing everything perfectly because if you don't you end up dead that's really the thing about this boss there's not a lot of gimmicks or tricks here you just have to be good at the game if you want to win corrupt toshi is a boss that puts certain dark souls bosses to shame like i said that's how difficult it is and unlike those games there's really no way to cheese the guy outside of just turning down the difficulty kenna may look like an easygoing family game but when it wants to it can be truly unforgiving. And number five is No More Heroes 3, uh, a boss called Fu. Regardless of your thoughts on this game, there's no denying that the highlights are really the bosses. Some of them can be a little challenging, but for the most part, it's pretty smooth sailing. That is, until you get to the number one on Galactic Hero rankings. The whole game has been building this weirdo up, and when you finally encounter him, you see why, because he does not screw around. The main thing that makes this guy such a pain to fight is he's got this infuriating shield that seems to block every everything you do. Anytime you see these purple eyeballs on him, that means you just can't do any damage to him at all. All you can really do is counter the guy as his shield tends to go down after certain attack patterns, but the timing is really unforgiving. It starts out bad and it only gets worse as the battle goes on. At least in the beginning, he's mostly attacking you up close, so it's not too hard to follow up with an attack, but after you drop his health bar to yellow, he starts adding in a series of annoyingly slow area of effect attacks where you're forced to to simply wait them out before you can hit him. And of course, as his health goes down, the timing on his shield gets even tighter. Like, look at this. It, it's like a second or less where you actually have the opportunity to damage him. It's that absurd. The second phase of the boss fight is a cakewalk in comparison. The worst thing about it is just going in with a low health bar and spending the entire fight worrying that if you die, you have to redo the first phase again. Because that is what can happen, to be clear. Uh, when it comes to unforgiving 
bosses, this guy has to rank among the very top just because of, of that shield. It's annoying as hell. At number four is Juzo Aman from Lost Judgment. If there's one thing players have come to expect from a Yakuza game, it's one of these guys just showing up. With Lost Judgment being a Yakuza game and everything but name, it's no surprise that there's one here too, and you encounter him in the exact same way by completing all of the side activities. These guys are pretty much always a pain in some way, either by having a massive health bar or a ton of unblockable attacks, but Juzo Aman is just a little different. Instead of being a total tank, he's got tricks up his sleeve that just make him super annoying to fight. On top of that, he has a ton of moves that stun you, and while you're laid out, he'll heal himself like a chump. That's what makes him so unforgiving. The fact that he is just not a fair fighter, not by any stretch. That's why the best way to deal with him is actually to beat him at his own game. Using certain extracts can completely neutralize many of his abilities, and it's possible with some practice to totally stun lock him with the right combo of abilities. Some of this stuff requires DLC to be able to pull off, so if the idea of paying to make a boss easier pisses you off, you'll have to fight him the normal way, which is a huge pain to put it mildly. In our opinion, there's no other boss gimmick more annoying than when a boss heals themselves, and this guy just does it constantly. And number three is the Dark Lord from Doom Eternal. Most people agree that Doom Eternal was a hard game, maybe even a little too hard depending on who you ask. It was a game that didn't screw around, even on normal difficulty, like death could come in an instant. It was tough, but here's the thing, in comparison to DLCs that came out later, the main game's a piece of cake. The Ancient Gods Part 1 and 2 were absolutely unforgiving, especially in the boss department. Part 1 had the absolutely ridiculous Sammer boss fight, while Part 2, which came out in 2020, 21 had this guy, the Dark Lord himself, the ruler of hell. Oh yeah, and he's also a clone of you, or you're a clone of him, whatever. The story kind of goes completely off the deep end with the ancient gods, and you just gotta roll with it. So going in, you're probably expecting a mirror match, but it's actually way harder than that. The guy's got a ludicrous five health bars, and while he fights like a really souped up marauder, he also has at least one ability that you do, uh, in that he can regenerate health. That's what makes this guy so unbelievably unforgiving. You pretty much have to play perfectly because if you shoot him when you're not supposed to, he heals. If you don't kill his summons, he heals. If, if he manages to hurt you, he heals. Which maybe wouldn't be the worst thing if the fight was quick, but it is not. It's a test of endurance that just keeps on going. The longer you're fighting, the more likely you are to screw up, while he gets harder and harder with every health bar you knock out. It's another boss who loves to heal himself, and it is so demoralizing in this one when you see his health fill back up it's easy to want to just stop we've heard of people that have been stuck on this guy for an hour or more that is how hard he is and number two is Bravely Default 2's Job Bosses. There's an actual secret boss in this game, but they're not as bad as this guy. Bravely Default 2 is a game that for most players starts out harder than it ends because of the complex battle system where it's easy to screw up. But after a while, you start getting the hang of things. You figure out some of the more overpowered combinations. You put together a solid battle plan. You build a party that, at least for a while, is seemingly unstoppable. But when you get near the end of the game, if you really want an overpowered party, you gotta finish these uh, optional battles hidden around the world map, which when completed, unlock the final class abilities, which are unsurprisingly incredibly powerful. They're so good, they almost make attempting these fights worthwhile, because otherwise these frustrating, brutal, and totally unfair fights are so annoying to deal with that they're better to just ignore. There's seven gates in total. Behind one are three, sometimes four powerful enemies that represent their job class. Usually the group has built-in synergies and of course they've got access to powerful class abilities that you don't get until after you beat them and most of these are a huge pain in the ass especially this one containing a bard a beast master a thief and a gambler which just feels like pure luck to beat group bosses and rpgs are bad enough but when they've both got the same abilities that you do as well as having rng firmly on their side sucks the most dangerous encounter of all of them is probably the one containing the brave breaker because it's already the most overpowered job in the game. Unless you go into this thing fully prepared, you're not going to stand a chance.
And finally, at number one, it's Weiss from the Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade. Yeah, that guy from Final Fantasy Dirge of Cerberus is somehow back to haunt another game, but at least he's just a bonus boss here instead of a main attraction. To face off against this guy, you have to have beaten the Final Fantasy VII Remake and the two Intergrade chapters, and then you can challenge him in the combat simulator found in Chapter 17. Being a bonus boss, it should come as no surprise that he's incredibly tough. He he does a ton of damage, he absorbs hits like they're nothing, and if you try to just fight him head on, he'll counterattack. Also, if you spend too long fighting him, he'll ruin you with an unblockable death attack called Immaculate End, so there's also that. Try to fight him normally and he'll constantly destroy you because he's basically unfair. I mean, he's got a phase where he literally becomes immune to all physical damage. Oh, that sucks. Thankfully, there are ways to make the fight much easier, but if you don't know about him, you're basically screwed. Quick bonus boss for you is Asvodalos, the fourth circle from Final Fantasy XIV, and this is on Savage difficulty. Uh, this is the boss at the end Walker raid, just to keep things simple. If we're talking tough, we have to mention this raid boss introduced into Final Fantasy XIV's Endwalker expansion. It's not something we normally cover, but if you're talking about tough bosses in video games, then, I mean, MMO raid bosses at general had to get some kind of a mention. They're literally designed to be tough for entire teams of people, and they require a ton of coordination and special preparations. We mentioned this guy specifically, uh, not because of how he is on normal, because he does have multiple instant kill attacks, but is relatively manageable. That said, on Savage difficulty, the most hardcore version of the raid, unless you've got a well-coordinated team that's going in completely prepared for any version of this fight, this guy can and will destroy you in no time. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero, and we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.